Navstig Rystig here again with another Dreams official tutorial recording. This is an episode on logic, health, modifiers, destroyers, and checkpoints. You're probably going to need a lot of those in whatever games you're making. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to give and take away health, as well as how to use checkpoints in your scenes. Let's start by going into play mode and seeing if you can get Connie across that first gap. Whoops. Sorry, Connie. I forgot to fix that. Don't worry, though. Even after falling such a long way, Connie is just fine. Only problem is, there's no way for her to get back up. What we need is for Connie to respawn on a platform if she falls, so that's going to be our next job. First, switch back to edit mode, remembering to rewind the scene with L3 as we always do after play mode. In order to make Connie respawn, we're going to use a health modifier gadget to make the floor around the platforms lethal. Health modifiers can damage or heal anything that has a health manager. And as luck would have it, Connie has one built right into her logic. Go to the assembly menu, open it with square first if it's closed, and select the gadgets menu, the one with three connected squares. You'll find the health modifier in the movers and output section, which is represented by a box with an arrow. Now select the clockwork heart, and your imp will be equipped with a health modifier gadget. Stamp it somewhere central near the floor using R2 or X. Then unequip the gadget with circle. Your scene now has a health modifier. But to make it work how we want, you'll have to tweak it first. Let's go ahead and open the health modifiers tweak menu by hovering over it, holding L1, then pressing square. Here you can set all the options for how the health modifier works, including how much health is modified, which is shown in the first slider. Right now it's set to minus 100 meaning it will take 100 health points from anything it affects. Just enough to make Connie respawn. The modifier mode is set to per hit, so 100 health will be taken away from anything that touches. But since we want the area around the platforms to be lethal, we need to set the modifier type to zone. Select the zone icon with X now. Then select the Zone Properties tab so we can change its size and shape. The icon is at the top of the menu and looks like a box in a zone. Look for the Zone Shape section of the menu, then select the cube. You can use the zone sliders to extend the zone. Be careful not to make it too tall. The respawn zone should be level with the pink lines around the platforms. Move the health modifier gadget nearer the floor if you need to. If you hover over the edges of the zone, you'll see white arrow gizmos appear. Grabbing these with R2 will let you change the size of the zone, so you can make sure the area around the platforms is covered. Now let's test it in play mode and see what happens. Perfect. If Connie falls off now, she'll just respawn back on the platform. Before we move on, maybe we should do something about this booby-trapped bridge. Switch back to edit mode and rewind the scene with L3. There, see what's causing it? It's that trigger zone. When Connie activates it, the bridge collapses and there's no way across. If you finished the first logic tutorial, you'll know the counter is being used to remember that the trigger zone has been activated. If you follow the wires, you'll see there's one connected to each block. These red dots on the blocks aren't gadgets. They show that a wire is connected to a setting in the block's tweak menu. Explore the logic for yourself. Or if you want to move on and get Connie on her way, just delete the trigger zone by pressing triangle over it. 
That will prevent any of the logic from activating. Then once Connie can safely make it to the second platform, move on to the next step. Now's probably a good time to show you how to add checkpoints to your scenes. When playable characters like Connie activate a checkpoint, the scene remembers their progress. So when they respawn, they'll appear at the last checkpoint instead of the start of the scene. Go to the assembly menu, then the gadgets menu. The last section you used will still be open, so close it by pressing circle over it. Expand the Gameplay Gear section with X and select the checkpoint. It's the one that looks like a location marker. There, now your imp is equipped with a checkpoint gadget. The direction of the checkpoint determines which way a character will be facing when it respawns. So make sure the front of the gadget, the side with the black outline, is facing the direction you want Connie to face. Remove the gadget from your imp with circle, then open the checkpoints tweak menu. Checkpoints use a detection zone, just like health modifiers. So select the zone size tab from the menu. This is set to a sphere by default, but to make sure players don't miss it, let's change it to a cube. You can use the zone size sliders to make the checkpoint cover the width of the platform. Above the gadget, you'll see a white move gizmo. Grab it with R2 to move the activation zone where you want it. Just make sure Connie can't miss it. The white handle shows the direction Connie will be facing when she respawns. Check that it's pointing the right way. Grab it with R2 if you need to adjust it. Let's close that tweak menu with L1 and circle and try it out in play mode to see if the checkpoint remembers your progress. Sorry, Connie, we're going to have to respawn you again, but it's all in the name of science, I promise. Great, there she is, right at the checkpoint again. This next bridge looks a bit too hot to walk on, but Connie's a tough explorer, always ready for danger, so let's give it a go. Hmm, but that block is too big for Connie to jump over. Better get back to safety before it's too late. Let's switch back to edit mode and see how the bridge is damaging Connie. Move closer to the bridge and keep an eye out for any gadgets attached to it. Ah, there it is. A clockwork heart gadget, which means another health modifier. Looks like instead of using a zone, this one is attached to the bridge. So whenever Connie walks on it, she loses health. If only that block wasn't in the way, she could make it across. What if the block itself could lose health? We could give it a health manager of its own and see how that works. Go to the assembly menu, then open the gadgets menu. You'll need to close the gameplay gear section you opened earlier, then expand the movers and output section. Look for the heart icon, not the clockwork heart this time. Select it with X to give your imp a health manager. Stamp one near the block with R2 or X, then press circle to unequip it from your imp. To make the health manager affect the block, we need to attach it. The easiest way to attach gadgets to objects is to use what we call surface snap. Grab the health manager with R2 and hold it over the block. All you have to do to activate Surface Snap is hold L1 while your imp holds a gadget, making it hug the surface of any object you hover over. Now release R2 to attach the gadget to the block. You can also let go of L1 to stop using Surface Snap. In the next step, I'll show you how to tweak this health manager. Now that we've given the block health, let's take a closer look at it. Hover over the health manager, hold L1, then press square to open its tweak menu. The sliders here tell you the block's maximum and current health. Click R3 to play the scene and you'll see how the health starts to go down. That's because the bridge's health modifier is damaging it. 
but you'll notice it's going down much slower than Connie's health when she was on the bridge. The reason for that is that this health manager has a one second cooldown. So whenever the block takes damage, it's invulnerable for one second after that. Grab the cooldown slider with X and pull it to the left with your imp. So what happens when its health reaches zero? Um, not a lot. But we can deal with that in the next step. For now, feel free to experiment with the health manager settings. Then play the scene with R3 and rewind it with L3 to reset the health manager. Once you're done, you can move on to the next step. An object doesn't get automatically destroyed when it runs out of health, so we need to do a bit more before we can get rid of that block. Let's take a closer look at its health manager. If its tweak menu is still open, close that first with L1 and circle. See the output ports on its right edge. Hover over the one at the bottom, the one that has a heart with a cross over it. This is the no health output, which sends a signal when the health manager is depleted. It could be used to trigger any number of things, but now we're going to use it to destroy the block. Go to the assembly menu and take a look in the gadget section. It should still be open from earlier, when you selected the health manager. Look for the skull icon in the movers and output section and select it with X. This is the destroyer gadget, which destroys whatever it's attached to. To attach it to the block, we can use surface snap. So hover the destroyer over the block, hold L1 to make it surface snap, and press R2 or X to stamp it on the block. You can unequip the destroyer with circle now. OK, before we connect it up, let's just see if it works by clicking R3. Oh, it works all right. When the scene is playing, the destroyer activates and destroys the block. Rewind the scene with L3 to bring it back. We don't want the destroyer to activate until the block's health has run out. To do that, we'll need to connect the no health output port to the destroyer's power. Now hover your imp over the no health output port of the health manager and press R2 or X to create a wire. This will make the power buttons appear on the gadgets in the scene. Stretch the wire over to the destroyer and connect it to its power with R2 or X. Good. Time to test it again with R3 and see what happens. When the block's health runs out, it will get destroyed leaving the path clear for Connie. But how do we know how much health the block has left? We could always look at its tweak menu but you can't see that in play mode. So click L3 to rewind the scene, and I'll show you how to display health on objects in the next step. If you don't have the Health Manager's tweak menu open already, open it now with L1 and square. When you hover over the menu sliders and buttons, you'll see ports popping out of the side. These work just like the ones on the outside of the gadget but there's a lot more of them. And you might also have noticed there's another gadget stamped on the side of the block. That's a number displayer gadget. And if we connect a wire from the current health output to the input port here, we'll be able to see the block's health count down in play mode. So let's go ahead and do that. Hover over the current health slider's output port. Then press R2 or X to create a wire and stretch it over to the number displayer. Once you've connected it to its input with R2 or X, you can switch over to play mode and test out the whole scene so far. Excellent! Now we can see the block taking damage until it's destroyed. Once you can get Connie to the next platform, switch back to edit mode and move on to the next step. Well, Connie made it through, but she's a bit worse for wear.
the burn effect you see on her is triggered by the current health output from her health manager, which gives you a visual cue of her health. The more sins she gets, the less health she has. We won't dig into how that logic works in this tutorial, but you can scope into Connie to explore it for yourself if you like. In any case, I'm not sure poor Connie has enough health to make it over the last bridge. What she needs is a bit of healing, so let's create a healing zone where she can recharge. This green pad looks like a good place to recover. We can turn it into a healing zone by placing a health modifier on it with Surface Snap. You've used Surface Snap before, so this should be no problem. Go to the assembly menu and select a health modifier from the movers and output menu. It's the clockwork heart, remember? Now activate Surface Snap by holding L1 and attach the health modifier to the green pad. Then you can unequip the gadget with Circle and open the Health Modifiers tweak menu. We need to change it so it heals Connie. The Health Modifier is set to minus 100 by default, which won't do Connie any good. She has 100 health to start with, so that will take it all away and make her respawn. Grab the slider with X, drag it right, and set it to plus 20. We want the healing zone to heal Connie as long as she stands on it, so you also need to set the modifier mode to continuous. You can leave the modifier type as impact, since you've snapped the health modifier to the platform. That's all there is to it, so close the tweak menu with L1 and circle and give it a try in play mode. All right, that should give Connie the health boost she needs to cross that final bridge. She's been through a lot today, so take her through the door to end this tutorial.